Hello and welcome to EGTV. My name's Damien Wilde and I'm editor of Estates Gazette. Today we're at Central St Giles for the launch of this striking and colourful new building in the heart of London. In a moment I'll be talking to the internationally renowned architect Renzo Piano who designed his first UK building here. But first I speak to the developers from Legal and General, Helen Gordon and from Mitsubishi Estates, Mr Amano. Okay, I'm now joined by the developers of this uh, striking building in central London, Helen Gordon from Legal and General and Mr Amano from ME. EC. Helen, if I can start with you, the question I'm obviously going to ask is about lettings and what occupies you, you've got coming into this building. We're standing in front of one on the, yes. on the restaurant side. You've had some interesting announcements on the restaurant in the last week. We've got half a dozen restaurant occupiers who are now um, in advanced stages of uh, leasing. Um, there's 10 restaurant units, one will be more community led, so that's quite a good proportion. Um, names Fishworks. Uh, Bincho, ZZ, um, Peyton and Burn, and we're really thrilled about Peyton and Burn because it's in the work lobby and uh, they have a great offer, so that's good. In terms of the offices, um, a lot more interest. You often find when a building like this is, is finished that it attracts a lot more um, interest. People didn't really understand it until um, it's now open and visible and just through there, which you can't see, but just through there is Covent Garden and uh, we're close to the city in the West End and we think it's a great place to work. So. Okay, and have you had interest from existing occupiers in the city, in Mayfair perhaps, looking at what is a, would be a new area for London, for many of them? Well, I it's, I mean, the, the whole building is very bright and vibrant and the whole idea was to try and attract media companies, the creative industries and, uh, and traditionally, you know, they they've looked around this area and now we're we're actually the first it's the biggest development in this area but it's also the biggest footplate so the footplate is just perfect for with great lighting for the creative industries and we've had a lot more looking at the building now okay there has been a name or two dangled in the press like mindshare there've been others that perhaps haven't been quite so publicly talked about like conoco phillips are these are these companies expected to come here? Are they, are they typical of the types of companies that will come here? I think that anybody looking for space in central London will now look at this building. Okay. Yes. Won't be drawn on that one. No. And quoting rents, are you talking about quoting rents? We're not quoting rents um, at the moment. Um, the project's been through quite um, a difficult time in the property market. It, we think it's finishing at just the right time. Um, there's pickup in demand and um, our approach to the whole project has been very bespoke and so what we want to do is talk to people about their requirements and about the rent and it's a whole package so we're not actually out there with a quoting rent at the moment. And Mr Romano yes. this isn't a, a part of London that's traditionally looked at yeah. uh, from a big corporate occupier perspective, mm -hmm. do you expect that to change? And so that and, uh, maybe the uh, person I saw that this site and then uh, we think that it's a very potential place and then uh, maybe the art of this site should be not changed and in, because uh, in between the West End and the city, the location is super to, in terms of the transport. Okay. Okay, well, Helen Gordon and Mr. Romano, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, I'm now with Renzo Piano, the architect of this striking building. Renzo, thank you for joining EG TV today. There's a lot of activity around us. You're about to give the, the piano lecture in the piazza just through there. <laughs> What's the thrust of what you'll be saying today? Well, you know, it's, I'm used to do this sort of thing. I mean, after the building's finished, to stand in the middle of the building and to tell students how, how it did happen, you know, when we started. It's kind of a true story. It's a nice thing to do. It's quite honest. I mean, and, 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 and people, especially students, um, are very happy because they can listen um, what really happened and um, well of course this is just finished so the building is not yet really used and people in the city are not yet used to go by and to pass by but it, from today people will start to use this piazza and they start to come so it's a good habit when the building is finished just to how you say uh, just to celebrate the end of the job, inviting everybody on board and talking. Okay. So you'll be telling them how, how it happened. How did it happen? 
Yes, well, uh, it's a long story as usual. It took about nine years. We started 2001. We went on for four or five years working, uh, designing, talking to Camden, making different options. We try everything, you know. Before you come to something uh, final, you try different combinations. We, we design towers, we design different combination, different mix of function, hotel, office, um, residential. Um, and then we started on site. And uh, this is a very typical story of how you can make a building so urban. It's a kind of a halfway between community design, urban design, is about taking care about community the way in the city, the pattern of people moving around, works, and, and construction, and, uh, and architecture, what we call architecture.